In this tutorial, we'll use the concepts that we have developed previously to understand how to perform principal component analysis. It's worth thinking here about the goal of dimensionality reduction, which is to take your original data, um, which is made of many samples of a large number of variables that you're recording from directly, and to reduce that to a much smaller number of features that you're not directly observing, but that you're inferring in order to, uh, to, uh, to capture much of the structure of the original data. And the key question for dimensionality reduction techniques is how do you find these features? Uh, we saw in the previous, uh, the previous lectures that much of the structure of the data can be revealed by the covariance. And we might expect that the directions that have large variation probably represent signal or other interesting features in the data, whereas directions of small variation probably represent uh, measurement noise. The goal of PCA is to find these directions of maximum variance and to use them to form the new orthonormal basis to represent your data. We saw in the previous tutorial that the projected variance is largest when the basis is aligned with the covariance direction. And uh, this also makes the correlation zero, but this is something we'll return to in the end of the lecture. Okay, so how do we actually um, find these directions? So the, the first step, is to find the vector that has the highest projected variance. And this is essentially what it sounds like. So you can just sweep over all possible vectors in your vector space until you find one uh, where the variance of the projected data is maximized. Um, this is called the first principal component. And then after this, we can find the second principal component by finding the vector that has the highest projected variance while being orthogonal to the first principal component. And um, if we continue this at each step, we're maximizing the projected variance constrained to the vectors that are orthogonal to all of the previous principal components that we found. Um, you don't actually have to do this in an iterative way because you can write down the mathematical solution, which is that the uh, the vectors are the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix. So let's just take a second for an eigenvalue refresher. So recall that a matrix can be seen as a linear transformation from an n-dimensional vector um, to another n-dimensional vector if we're talking about a square matrix in this case. Uh, so um, here we have uh, V uh, that is transformed um, into a new vector A times V. And this new vector is pointing typically in a different direction and has a different magnitude from the original vector that you started with V. You can do this for all of the vectors in the vector space and you get um, many different output vectors. Uh, and uh, you might notice that sometimes you observe that there are some vectors that after you transform them, they're still pointing in the same direction, but they have a different magnitude. These are called eigenvectors. So an eigenvector for a matrix A is a, ma a vector that satisfies the equation on the left. So just to take you through this, this is A times V, so that's the linear transformation of the vector V by the matrix A is equal to a scaling, so a scalar lambda times the same vector V. So the eigenvector is a vector so that the linear transformation um, in, is just a, a, um, a stretching or a shrinking in the same direction. And the stretching or shrinking amount, which is lambda, uh, we call the eigenvalue. Okay, so if you um, take the, the goal of PCA um, and you do the constrained optimization problem in pen and paper, then you get out that the uh, solution is the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix. But how do you know which of the eigenvectors correspond to the maximal projected variance? Well, it turns out that the projected variance onto each of these vectors is actually just given by the corresponding eigenvalue, lambda i. Um, so you don't actually have to calculate the projected uh, variance of the data. Uh, this also uh, gives a natural ordering of the uh, eigenvectors of the covariance matrix um, in order of uh, how much of the variance of the data they're able to explain. Okay, so how do we actually perform PCA? Um, here's the basic algorithm. The first step 
is to subtract the mean. So for each neuron, for example, subtract its average firing rate across uh, all of these samples. And this is very important for making it easier to calculate the covariance matrix. I would say around 80% of the problems of PCA are an issue with mean subtraction. The second step is to calculate the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix of the data and order them by their corresponding eigenvalue, which again is the, um, the projected variance. And then the final step is to project the data onto the new basis. Since the new basis is orthonormal, we can just do this with matrix multiplication. There's a little bit of different terminology um, because PCA is so widely used, uh, but generally the, uh, the vectors corresponding to the eigenvectors or the new orthonormal basis uh, are usually called loadings or weights, and the projected data is usually described as a scores. In the case that we're using PCA for dimensionality reduction, they may also be called latent variables. And the key properties that you should always remember about PCA are that uh, the, uh, the basis vectors, WI, are orthogonal by construction, the scores SI are uncorrelated, and the eigenvalues lambda I are equal to the projected variance. So now it's your turn to perform PCA on your bivariate Gaussian data.